Hello, my name is Roy, and welcome to Cross Cultural Adventures. In the last episode, we explored the essential 12 key steps when demonstrating the application of critical thinking to the process of writing in an academic scale. This week, we will apply the same 12 steps to the ch challenge of writing in a professional business context. So what is the purpose and audience of professional business writing? First, academic and professional business communication both reflect what are called formal styles of writing. However, within an organizational context, professional writing serves a unique purpose and arises in response to a very different set of problems than those typically experienced in an academic environment. For example, professionals write to solve rather than to analyze problems. They propose new strategies, record vital information, negotiate new contracts, map out the future direction of the company, track quality control benchmarks, and then report earnings to stakeholders or investors. Moreover, the target audience for business writers is very varied, incorporating, for example, managers, employees, customers, engineers, regulatory agencies, lawyers, and stockholders. Therefore, the process can best be described as transactional or as writing to do or achieve something. In addition, the application of critical thinking is further complicated by considerations such as the type of organizational culture and a variety of cross-cultural issues. To gain an introduction to organizational cultures, please read our blog posts and the link is provided in the episode description. Then, cross-cultural issues will be examined in future blog posts and in future podcast episodes. So, for now, let's explore the application of critical thinking in a professional writing style, beginning with organizational awareness. Here the urgent requirement is to understand how to structure a wide variety of written genera, including proposals, reports, business plans, marketing projections, and presentations. All these formats require research, selective critical reading, and careful critical thinking to avoid potential conflict with a range of highly sensitive audiences. Next comes planning management. The focus here is on meeting various urgent deadlines while also demonstrating a sensitivity to various con uh, constraints in terms of what can and cannot be reported in writing due to factors such as legal considerations, reasons of confidentiality, and factors related to competition. So these complex challenges require very careful 
and critical evaluation. Analytical application. Then, professional writers need to narrow down issues to the needs of a large and complex number of internal and external audiences who have very different requirements and priorities. Next comes imaginative creativity. Here, in contrast to students, business professionals must often write in their or in or on their own initiative, not being told what to do by some teacher. And this means being required to create and define their own assigned tasks. At the same time, they need to take full responsibility for the information they transmit. Number five, speculative curiosity. Also, business professionals need to be self-motivated to critically research and prioritize a wide range of information to address the needs of a varied audience from a complex range of sources. They can't wait to be told what to do by somebody else. After this, we have open-minded skepticism. In this context, they need to face the challenge that key information is frequently disputed and often constantly changing while not always being what the organisation, the reader, wants to hear in the first place. This can be particularly challenging in relation to a wide, wide range of often conflicting statistical data that is open to an even wider range of possible interpretation. Number seven, ambiguity tolerance, or if you like, tolerance for ambiguity. So here, business writers need to understand that there is never one possible solution or response to the complex issues faced by organizations in an ever-evolving business context. The ability to think critically under pressure can determine the difference between success, failure, or conflict, both from the perspective of the writer and for the organization. So let's move on to logical development. Business writers are under constant pressure to narrow down available information and only focus on what any specific audience immediately needs to know. They haven't got time to read huge amounts of information and data that is often included in academic writing. Get to the point. Nine, effective problem solving. Before publication, these writers often need a high degree of diplomacy and sensitivity in order to solicit, gain feedback from others. Then often they need to work with diverse stakeholders to construct a practical recommendation of course of action that subsequently avoids conflict. 
communication sensitivity. These writers must select a tone in their writing style that best reflects the ethos of their organization and the members of external audiences. Therefore, tailoring the communication to many different audiences requires careful critical evaluation and sophisticated prior planning. Moreover, this can include cross-cultural variations in rhetorical styles, together with the significant contrast between direct versus indirect language styles, some of which was covered in episode 3. Moving on, critical evaluation. Written materials must focus solely on some form of recommended action, often expressed in terms of the short-term, medium-term or long-term objectives of the company. But remember, here the focus remains on making things happen. Finally, disciplined attentiveness. As is the case with academic writing, care needs to be taken to very carefully proofread and check the content to avoid, for example, legal challenges, and then polish the language to make it easily accessible to the reader. They haven't got time to waste. However, it's important to remember that the personal consequences for errors can be much more serious for a business writer than for students, including the loss of employment and not just some poor grade. So. In the episode next week, we'll move on to explore the application of critical thinking to the design and delivery of presentations. Till then, thanks for listening, and we hope you join us again next week. For now, goodbye.